Hello everyone, welcome to this episode of the Sky Sports F1 podcast, our first one standing up. Maybe we should make this more of a regular thing. It's a first, know. is it? It is a first, yeah, we'll see. Um, we're here to have a chat about the uh, new Ferrari movie, which features Adam Driver, Penelope Cruz, directed by Michael Mann. We all went to the cinema to uh, see the premiere this week. It was pretty good, wasn't it? No, but you were on the red carpet interviewing everyone. How was it? First of all, the weather wasn't playing with us. So it was very, very cold, a lot of rain. That's London for you, though, this time of year. But to be honest, uh, it was well worth it because as you just you know, listed off the fantastic cast that's in this movie, Michael Mann, obviously the director, Adam Driver, who plays Enzo Ferrari in the movie, um, Patrick Dempsey, Penelope Cruz, Jack O'Connell, Shailene Woodley, I mean, an incredible cast. So I, I felt very honored to yeah. have a chat to all of them. I was really excited to see them and especially Patrick because, you know, he's an actor, an incredible actor, but um, also a racing driver. Mm. The dream combination. Dream combo. <laughs> uh, so for a bit of context, this film is uh, set in 1957. It's about Enzo Ferrari. Ferrari are in uh, dire straits, really. They're going bankrupt. He's got a volatile marriage uh, with his wife. And he realizes the only way he can get, get out of this is to race in the Mia, uh, Mille Mia. I've tried to get that right. It's quite a tricky oh, one. Just a... Emilia. 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 There we go, almost. Um, so that's <laughs> the only way he can get out of it. And yeah, it follows that story. Um, I mean, Martin, what did, what did you make of that? You've raced in the Mille Mia as well. So how was it? Did it bring back great memories of, of that? It did, and I really enjoyed the movie. It took me a little while to tune in to the heavy Italian accent, <laughs> if I'm honest, but uh, knowing the backstory helps and these incredible drivers around the table with... Enzo Ferrari and what a character. I never had the privilege of meeting him actually, and I wish I had have done, but um, uh, the story uh, and the backstory to the whole thing and the relationships and, and driving the team forward and all those lovely lines of, you know, I, I, I race, uh, I, I make cars to go racing. I don't race to sell more cars and, and stuff like that, where you really, I think he got the true spirit of Enzo Ferrari and just the, the scary nature of doing that race. Mm. Simon, you interviewed Michael Mann, didn't you? I did. This week. What was, what, what was that like and, and what did he make of the film? Uh, what was he trying to achieve with the film? Well, he's a legend, isn't he? I mean, he's 80 years of age and he, he doesn't look it. He, he certainly doesn't seem it when you sit down and you talk to him and his mind is just uh, a whirling torrent of everything that he's pieced together over 30 years of research for this. Because I think he went through a lot of iterations of the car, so Christian Bale was attached to it for a while, but in the end, he ended up with Adam Driver in the lead role, as, as Naomi was saying. And I think his point on this was 57 was effectively just a load of things colliding within his world. So it was the year after the death of his son, Dino, which affected his marriage so badly, affected him, affected Laura Ferrari so well. It was also the last year of the Mille Miglia because of what happened at the end with Alfonso de Patago. But, but also it was that, that group, that squad of Ferrari drivers, uh, which was seven strong. And it starts, doesn't it, with the death in testing of uh, Castellotti. When you look back in the history books, six of the seven actually lost their lives at the wheel of a car. Uh, and that, there were some great drivers within that squad. So there was Peter Collins, Mike Hawthorne, Wolfgang von Tripp. So I think there was that. And it was also the fact that Ferrari was on the verge of going bust, going back to your point, Martin, of, you know, is it about producing cars so they can go racing? I think in the end, they had to do that because eventually, of course, they were taken over by Fiat. But mm. I think that's why the, this was the touch point of the film. Mm. There were a couple of fairly big crashes in that film, Naomi. What, did you, what were your impressions of the brutality of motorsport back in that, in that time? Yeah, well, I, look, I think I'm quite fortunate that the time that I was a driver in motorsport, for the safety had come such a long way already. So I think that was the first, one of the first things when I saw the drivers getting in the car, we see that first crash happening. Um, for me, it just made me think, wow, how brave drivers had to really be back in the day to jump in these cars. Uh, obviously incredible cars, but safety isn't where it is today in motorsports. So yeah, it takes some huge courage um, and bravery to get in a car like that. So yeah, hats yeah. off to them. And Martin, it was, it was not just the drivers at risk, was it? I think the film does a really good job of showing that actually it was people in the crowd. It was just a, often hay bales that were protecting the crowd from the, from the drivers and from their cars. It does a terrifying job in the movie of showing that actually towards the end, doesn't it? The CGI of, of De Portago's accident and the deaths, the tragic deaths 
on the side of the track, but it really is a thousand miles through little villages and towns. And uh, even when we did it in a more modern times, although I was in a Jaguar D-type doing it, you know, the police are waving you on to go ever faster. And uh, it, it, it's extraordinary. And you couldn't do a race like that today. I mean, when Sterling Moss won it in 55, it took just over 10 hours, uh, that incredible event that they had there. So, but I think that era, it was more accepted to die in a racing car. I think it came off the back of the, the two world wars and maybe some military sort of mentality. Uh, and it just seemed normal. And, and there's a line in there that Adam Driver comes up with as Ferrari, uh, Enzo Ferrari saying, you know, when I lost my first friend and driver, I had to build a wall uh, from there on. And I can relate to that. I'm a team boss I had, Ken Tyrrell, who had drivers killed in his cars and and that era even in the 80s was still that mentality was still you know um treat drivers like light bulbs when one goes out put another one in Goodness and they, it comes through in the movie as well doesn't it yeah. and so that that lasted actually for a few decades um and we're in a different place altogether now yeah Martin's done it. Simon, Naomi, do you fancy it as a as a double act? I, I do. I, I just. I, I'd love to. I'd love. I mean, amazing, wouldn't it, to, to recreate this? But I just want to go back to what Martin was talking about there, with the with regards to the detail that Michael Mann put into these crash sequences. He said he went to where De Portago had that crash. He went to the actual town as part of his research. They got the police reports. So they could, they could work out exactly what had happened and, and the angle the car was doing so they could match it up with the CGI. And whilst they were there, a really old guy came out of the house and he said, oh, you're talking about the Patago crash. I was there that day. This is what really happened. Wow. So he was, get, he was getting eyewitness mm. testimony. He built up this. He had, you know, volumes of files on the subject. And so, it, as you say, five million spect spectators used to come out and line the streets of Italy and the roads of Italy to watch this. And it was hay bales and, uh, you know, you couldn't get away with it now, could you? No, 50, 60 years later when you do the re recreation of it, but you do go up into these tiny little town squares and you think, I would never have found this by myself without being on this incredible event. And uh, yeah, literally people all over the place yeah. cheering you on. It's, uh, it's an institution and yeah. uh, sadly, of course, we just can't do anything like that anymore. Yeah, very special. Naomi, I thought one of the great parts about the film was this, the sound design and the soundscape. In the cinema, it sounded so good and, and, and the way those cars were built back then, they were, with the shots, they were flying past. I thought it sounded amazing. What did you think? Yeah, so I have, by the way, I don't know if you know this, but um, because I was doing the premiere yeah. and hosting the red carpet, I actually got to thing. see, <laughs> I, no, they did, I mean, sadly, I wish I could say that, but that wasn't the case. They gave me a link to watch the movie oh, yes. <laughs> ahead of everyone else. So the first time I watched it was actually at home. Um, I do have a projector, but it, I obviously didn't have that cinematic experience with the sound the very first time. And honestly, I, I would say, even if you don't watch it in cinema, um, it's still incredible. But obviously the second time I watched it then in cinema with the sound, especially sometimes you could hear cars, the car would drive past off screen and then you could still hear it driving past you in the cinema. So uh, they, they, they definitely did a great job there and it really gives you more of an immersive experience in the cinema, definitely. Mm. Martin, you've driven some of those cars that were referenced in the film. Did it take you back to driving them? Did it, as, a, as a, someone who will never get to drive one of those cars probably, ha, give us an impression of what, what, what it was like and how realistic it was? I think it was very realistic. I mean, you, you don't actually go down the road, four or five of you jockeying for position <laughs> like that, but um, that, that's good for the movie. But the, the sound of the cars, and you, you're right, the sort of sound came through the cinema, didn't it? As if the car was passing you, but, but in a really dramatic way. Um, but they were quite rudimentary, very analog cars, um, you know, shifting a big gearbox, and they didn't, they didn't have any downforce. They probably had lift as they were going faster, and quite skittish cars. Um, but like any great racing car, they all had good balance, the ones that were at the front. And, and another thing I can relate to is where they keep passing slower cars, because there are a lot of cars in different classes where, and, and the number of your car relates to your starting time, for yeah. example. So, yeah. you, you know, you're going to be passing tens, if not hundreds of cars going much slower mm -hmm. than you. So that all felt very real to me. Uh, and say, climbing up into a little village square full of people. Did they have seatbelts? Or this was the era where they wanted to be thrown clear of the car, yeah, didn't they? Uh, absolutely no seatbelts. Yeah. They didn't come in exactly. until the 70s in Yeah, that you, you, your best amazing. chance of surviving a shunt was to get, get thrown out of it. You see that, don't you, with yeah. Castellotti at the start, yeah. getting thrown away, but he didn't survive. 
Scary stuff. Uh, just a final word then on, on Adam Driver and his performance as, as, as Enzo Ferrari. Simon, what did, what did you make of that? He, 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 Enzo Ferrari is an enigma, isn't he? We, we still don't know a huge amount. Oh, I don't think we do know a huge amount about him. But what, what did you make of his performance? Well, no one, as Michael Mann said, said to me, actually, when we were interviewed, no one really looks like Enzo Ferrari. <laughs> he is his own thing. So you know, he had to kind of, uh, you know, I suppose, make up, did a good job. But, yeah, exactly. And, he, and the, the Italian accent, there or thereabouts, I think. But I think the thing with him is it, it, it was clear that he, he led this double life, didn't he? And I thought that Adam Driver... Well, I actually thought Penelope Cruz was outstanding as Laura Ferrari because she was clearly hugely affected by the death of, uh, of Dino. And you kind of get that, apparently, by all accounts, her behaviour became much more erratic after, after he died. And, you know, in the end, the marriage collapsed. And I think that, you know, one of her wishes was that... Um, Piero didn't take the Ferrari family name until after she died, and then, of course, he died. He, he's the vice chairman now and, and all that. So it was clearly a very complicated role to play for Adam Driver, but he's one of the world's best actors, isn't he? I mean, you know, he's Kylo Ren uh, <laughs> one day, and then, he's, <laughs> and then he's Enzo Ferrari the next. So, yeah, good job. If anyone can do it, Adam Driver can. Cool. Well, thank you, guys. Thank you very much for giving us your thoughts on the film. And just a reminder, it's out in cinemas on Boxing Day here in the UK and then in cinemas throughout December in the rest of the world. We hope you enjoy the film. Bye for now.